Welcome to Off the Page Sacred Jazz. I'm Deanna Witkowski. Each week I share practical resources for musicians seeking to merge the richness of jazz with the beauty of liturgy. Now each week I often share sheet music resources, but today I'm going to do something a little different because I have an exciting announcement. My new book a new biography of the pioneering jazz pianist, composer, and liturgical musician Mary Lou Williams is now available from Liturgical Press and also directly from myself at the link that you see below at rebrand.ly slash Deanna Book. I'm so excited about this biography. It represents really over 20 years of research that I've done into Mary Lou Williams' life and music. And for those of you who don't know anything about Mary Lou Williams or those of you who know a lot about her, you'll find exciting new information about her sacred music, about uh, her story of how her spiritual journey and her musical journey intertwined with each other. So what I'm going to do for these next two off the page videos is today I'm going to just read a brief page and a half from my introduction, which explains why Mary Lou Williams is important to me, a little bit of how she led me here to my new home in Pittsburgh, and what I hope the book will do for the reader. Next week, I'm going to play here in my living room one of Mary Lou's sacred music pieces her setting of the Lord's Prayer, and I'm also going to share a link where you can get a new performance edition of that piece. So here, uh, just starting on page four of my introduction, I'm going to read this brief excerpt. A further word about my own connection to Williams. As a professional jazz pianist, composer, and liturgical musician, I was introduced to Williams in 1999 when pianist and educator Dr. Billy Taylor invited me to perform at the Kennedy Center's Mary Lou Williams Women in Jazz Festival. On its setting, I realized that I knew almost nothing about the festival's namesake. Like the majority of jazz musicians, I only knew that Williams had been a lauded pianist composer who had mentored other jazz stars whose music I did know. I asked myself why I had never heard any of this woman's music. My eagerness to learn more about Williams came at an opportune time. Morning Glory, a new Williams biography by Linda Dahl had just been published and trumpeter Dave Douglas had released a Williams tribute album, Soul on Soul. So I emailed him asking for a list of essential Williams recordings. I started listening to Mary's music and since then have never stopped. From Dahl's biography, I learned that Mary Lou Williams was a liturgical jazz pioneer who had composed three mass settings. I was astonished. Just two years earlier, I'd relocated from Chicago to New York to serve as a full-time music director at All Angels Episcopal Church. I'd recently composed my second jazz mass for the congregation and began presenting my music in churches outside of New York. I realized that I shared a goal with Williams, whether composing for a specific congregation or playing in a jazz club, to make jazz, or more broadly, all of my original work, accessible to all. Like Williams, I believe that jazz should be played everywhere, in the club, at the community center, on the sidewalk, in church. In Williams, I had unexpectedly found a soul companion and lifelong mentor. Over the intervening years, Mary, whom from this point on I will call by her first name, has become more and more a part of my life. As an adult convert to Catholicism, who converted through the influence of the Jesuits, even attending a lay spirituality program at the same New York parish where Mary presented St. Martin de Porres, her first major liturgical work in the early 1960s, I began to realize that I was literally walking in Mary's footsteps. As a musician who presents jazz in churches of all different denominations, I often picture Mary seated at the piano in St. Patrick's Cathedral on Fifth Avenue, playing her joyous Mary Lou's Mass with her trio in front of 3,000 people as five priests process to the altar. Mary gives me courage. 
Sometimes I speak with her before I play, knowing that in a very real sense, she has been here before me. Once I began spending extended time in her hometown of Pittsburgh, I came to realize that the warmth I felt in the welcoming, soulful people in the city where she grew up was the same warmth I've experienced in all of Mary's playing. Now I too call Pittsburgh home. Each time I step onto the stage to play, just mere feet from the Charles Teeny Harris photo of her that hangs proudly at the Pittsburgh Jazz Club Con Alma, I send a quick prayer to Mary, thanking her for being with me, and then I start pressing down the keys, letting the sound, the space, and everything it has taken to get me to this moment all come out. I hope that a fraction of what I feel when I play is expressed in these pages, and that Mary's story will bring you to what, for her, was the most important thing, her music. And with that, next week I will be sharing some of Mary's music, her setting of the Lord's Prayer. So if you're interested in reading a larger excerpt of the book or purchasing the book, you can do so either at rebrand.ly slash Deanna book. That's for a signed copy that will come directly from me to your home. You can also purchase a book from Liturgical Press at litpress.org, and that's also the site where you can get an ebook version as well. So for all of you interested in sacred jazz, liturgical jazz, Mary Lou is definitely a person to check out. And I'm so excited to be bringing her story to you and to share some of her music with you next week. And until then, I wish you a good week and I'll see you next week on Off the Page Sacred Jazz.